The war in Ukraine is not simply a war between Russia and Ukraine. From the very beginning of this conflict that really goes back to 2014, it's been quite clear that this is a proxy war between Russia and NATO. And really, because NATO is led by the United States, it's really a proxy war between Russia and the United States. You can't understand the conflict in Ukraine unless you go back to the coup in 2014 in February, that a violent coup led by far-right extremists that overthrew the democratically elected president of Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych, who had an independent foreign policy and was trying to balance the West with Russia. He was overthrown and a pro-Western regime was installed and this set off a civil war. I myself published a report looking at a document that was written by the US ambassador to Russia back in 2008. His name was William Burns. Today, he is CIA director. And in this State Department cable that we have, thanks to WikiLeaks, William Burns, the US ambassador to Russia turned CIA director, warned, he said that if Ukraine joins NATO, there are fears that the issue could potentially split the country in two, leading to violence or even some claim civil war, which would force Russia to decide whether to intervene. So members of the U.S. government, top level officials have known for years that this conflict, the U.S. policy of NATO expansion surrounding Russia would potentially set off a civil war in Ukraine that could lead to a broader war. And we have more and more evidence showing that the U.S. government is not only supporting Ukraine with tens of billions of dollars of weapons, but the U.S. is in many ways leading Ukraine, directing war, Ukraine in this war, this proxy war against Russia, the U.S. military and also the CIA. The notorious U.S. spy agency is involved in every facet of this proxy war. And a new report shows that the CIA is actually using another member of NATO that is located in Europe to launch sabotage operations against infrastructure inside Russia. And we know this because of a report that was published by a U.S. journalist who is himself very close to the U.S. intelligence agencies and the U.S. military. His name is Jack Murphy. Jack Murphy is a former U.S. military special operations officer, and he became a journalist. He's a pretty mainstream journalist, and he has a very good report in which he details the role of the CIA and an allied intelligence agency based in a European NATO member. And they're working together to launch sabotage operations inside Russia territory, Russian territory, destroying railroads, destroying uh, power facilities. Uh, cutting cables, cutting power, blowing up military facilities or setting them on fire. So this is a clear example of the United States, of the CIA, quite directly waging war on Russia inside its own territory. And this is the latest example of a growing mountain of evidence proving that this conflict, as I said, is not a war simply between Russia and Ukraine. It is a war between Russia and NATO, between Russia and the United States. Now, I'm going to go through this report. I'm going to talk about the very important revelations in it. But before I, I want to review some statements that have been made by Western officials that show just how dangerous this proxy war is, because although the United States is involved in basically every single way in this war, the U.S. military does not technically have forces on the ground in Russia, but that could happen and it could escalate to a full on conventional direct war between the US and Russia as opposed to an indirect war like it is now. And this has been acknowledged by the leader of NATO. And this was reported in the Associated Press on December 9th in an article titled, NATO chief fears Ukraine war could become wider conflict. It quotes the NATO Secretary General, Jen Stoltenberg, and the AP reported that the head of NATO expressed worry that the fighting in Ukraine could spin out of control and become a war between Russia and NATO, which, as I said, that's what it already is, at least indirectly and in some ways directly. But he himself acknowledged that this could escalate further. It's very dangerous. And Jen Stoltenberg said, it is a terrible war in Ukraine. It is also a war that can become a full fledged war that spreads into a major war between NATO and Russia. He added, there is no doubt that a full-fledged war is a possibility. So instead of simply being a proxy war, NATO is saying that this could become a full-on conventional war between the US and Russia, between NATO and Russia. There was a very similar and very concerning comment made by the commander of US Strategic Command, which is known as STRATCOM. And this is the branch, the part of the US military that oversees nuclear weapons. So. This is a huge concern considering the threat of nuclear war. Of course, the U.S. and Russia are the two largest nuclear armed powers in the world. 
And this was reported at the U.S. Department of Defense on November 3rd. It quotes Navy Admiral Charles A. Richard, the commander of STRATCOM. He said, quote, this Ukraine crisis that we're in right now, this is just the warm up. The big one is coming and it isn't going to be very long before we're going to get tested in ways that we haven't been tested in a long time. So very concerning remarks. You could say this is maybe an act of psychological warfare, trying to threaten Russia with the hint of nuclear war. But it's also real. This proxy war could escalate further into a very dangerous direct conventional war. So today in this analysis, I'm going to look at mainstream media reports that have been in the New York Times, in the Washington Post, showing the hand of the CIA and the US military and other European militaries and intelligence agencies in fueling this war, directly participating in this proxy war. The New York Times had an article about the involvement of US Special Operations Forces and the CIA and Western militaries that was published in June and it acknowledged that the war in Ukraine is a proxy war. Yahoo News has had a series of articles detailing this going back to even before Russia invaded Ukraine in February. Yahoo News published an article in January titled CIA trained Ukrainian paramilitaries may take central role if Russia invades. They also published a very similar report in March after Russia invaded titled C secret CIA training program in Ukraine helped Kiev prepare for Russian invasion. So there have been mainstream media outlets that have acknowledged this. But now I want to go back to this report by the U.S. Special Operations Officer turned journalist Jack Murphy and look at some of the details that he revealed. Now, who is Jack Murphy? He published a book called Murphy's Law in which he talks, it's a memoir, he talks about his life as a former army ranger sniper and special operations weapons surgeon, sergeant turned journalist. So he was a US military officer who was involved in US special operations. And I wanna be very clear, he is not in any way a pro-Russian journalist. He in many ways is pro-Ukrainian and he's very close to the US military and US intelligence agencies. And he's an example of one of these journalists that you could say plays a role as a kind of limited hangout. He will sometimes release information about U.S. military operations and intelligence operations that can be potentially convenient for the U.S. government in some ways and can be part of the information war and the psychological war against Russia, right? But he also is a, he's a genuine journalist. He's done some good work. And in this case, he wrote an article that mainstream media outlets refused to publish. So he had no option but to publish it at his website. And this was acknowledged by the journalist Seth Harp. Seth Harp is himself another U.S. military veteran who fought in the Iraq war, and he's become a journalist as well. And he's also close to the military, but he's done some good reporting, especially on the proxy war in Ukraine. And Seth Harp has detailed how the U.S. military is involved in the proxy war in Ukraine, basically in every single way possible, up to the point of having U.S. military forces directly on the ground. I mean, that's the, basically that's the only further way that it could escalate. The U.S. is involved in every other way in this proxy war. And Seth Harp pointed out when he shared this article, he pointed out that no fewer than three major national publications killed this deeply reported and well-sourced story by Jack Murphy under pressure from the CIA.